Calrissian, did he survive? Yes, he's alive. And in perfect hibernation. He's all yours, bounty hunter. So here's my start of my Han Solo in Carbonite build. It's a standard frame door, 30 by 80 here in America. And I actually got it without any holes in it. So I was pretty fortunate there. So right now I'm just sketching out according to the picture. I took the picture and uh, I stole some ideas off of uh, YouTube. So if it looks familiar, then you are correct. And I'll try to put links to everybody's stuff that I uh, borrowed from. But I took a standard picture, cut it up into little pieces there, kind of, sketched it out as to what was halfway, what was a quarter way, and then I did the same thing on the door. And then I started to draw out Han Solo. So I'm getting it pretty close to where everything should be. It looks like the belt came a little too high, or a little too short, excuse me. So I'm moving up just a bit. And it's hard to see with the light, but here's his knee right there. And I tell you, what really is going to sell the piece overall, in my mind, is the face. And there it is. This I actually ordered uh, off of a website. I'd tell you who it is, but I wasn't too excited about working with them, and I wouldn't want to recommend them to anybody. The piece itself is actually really nice. It's a... Uh, it's a plastic so it should work pretty good this is going a little bit better than I thought it would so I took some wire mesh about quarter inch squares and I started sculpting out the legs you see a little depth there if I put my hand behind it maybe that'll give you, give you a little height there so his knee's a little high here, and then it comes down a little bit. And then uh, for the belt, I folded it over in the middle. And sort of like tilted it a little bit. So it shall match up kind of on Han's belt buckle there. Or lack thereof. Just a little bit more progress, Scott, here. Here's the belt buckle. So there's a little bit of depth in there, so that the fabric that hangs over it will give it a little bit of uh, look like there's a belt. I also put a little extra piece of uh, metal here, hard to see. So I'll give it sort of like an edge here, so sort of like the edge of the belt. And here's the crease in the middle, sort of like a little hump here. After stapling at the edges, and at that edge, I sort of pushed in a little bit. Just to give him a little bit of a depth here for his diaphragm. And I'm working my way up the chest. So, there she is there. Okay, I finished the top portion of the chest. There's a slight overlap here, but it's pretty smooth. Slight edge here. There's a good, there's a good edge here. Sort of like right there. So a good edge here. Dips down a little bit for the neck. And this edge sort of like curves. Not really, a, not really a super edge like on here. So it's sort of like a curve kind of. And here's the the black line shows the actual shoulder drawing here and this one here and you can see I've made some other drawings which weren't as close as these are this will be kind of where the shirt's gonna be up and there it is there Okay, what I'm figuring is if I put just one layer of cloth on top of this, the metal webbing might show through. So I'm going to put two layers. I'm going to start with a base layer of cloth 
just to smooth that out a bit, and then I'll, when I put the next layer of cloth on, I'll give it the uh, appropriate types of um, creases and so forth. A little tight bond and a little water to cut it. Uh, not too much water, but a little water to thin it out a little bit so I can soak all the pieces and lay it in place. Okay, the undercloth has gotten hard here, so that's good. And for the top layer of cloth, I took some regular, the regular shirt that I cut up, uh, mixed it with some tight bond, a little water, actually a lot of water, if you ask me. I put a lot of water on this, and it's it's always a rock. And basically, that's one piece for the shirt. Uh, the seams here, I basically cut the edge of the shirt off down where, where normally there'd be a seam. Like on this shirt, there's a seam there. I just cut it completely off and laid it in there on both edges. So those are just separate pieces. But in the end, it'll look totally like a shirt. The legs here. Top portion here is basically done. That's all dry, so this is all wet. Okay, I figured that a lot of people are going to be touching this, and this isn't quite stiff, stiff. So I'm going to put another coat on here and probably on the top too. Because it's 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 good. It's in shape. It's holding its shape. I don't know if you can see it there. But uh, this way, you know, people go up to it and touch it. They won't be able to like press it in or nothing. So I'm gonna put another coat on there, straight up. I'm not gonna cut it. I'm not gonna cut the uh, the tight bond there with any water. I'm just gonna pour it straight on there and just paint it around. And at some point, I'll fix the edges and make it a little bit more smoother. Not too sure what I'm going to do that with. Probably with some wood filler, maybe. Okay, the um, second coat, thick coat, is uh, hardened up there. I think it's going to look really good, actually. It's going to look really good. I think the chest probably should have been just a smack higher. But it should be okay. And for the feet, his feet don't really show much on the picture so I felt like you know what I'm just gonna build it I mean if you have a bandsaw then cut some shoes but I just took some metal and made a u-shape took some foam fill make the top this one too this one sticks out a little bit less uh, according to the picture I'm basically just gonna take some cloth here lay it over it and then use my trusty tight bond over it to make it rock solid so I'm working with this uh, plastic wood filler sort of like a spackle but it's more for wood I felt it would work good here to make a good transition so to keep more of the shape of the character here so we're uh, like here where it went a little extra from the cloth now it's gonna look like it's not really part of the the cloth anymore it's gonna be more part of the, the overall carbonite I felt that the head was sticking out a little too far so I cut a hole and recessed it a little bit and that sits a little bit better the neck was sticking out the Zadam's out was just sticking out way too high and I looked at a uh, side view of the actual movie and basically it starts right here so that should work pretty good. I'll probably tack it in place with a couple of spots of glue and then use this stuff here to go around. Give it a nice look. The head's all in now. Uh, it starts off this pink color and then it turns into this other color here. I threw a couple of swatches here and there just to make sure it doesn't look completely flat like in the original, which is not completely flat. A 
Originally, my idea was to buy a glove, fill it with FOMO fill, and use that. It looks kind of hokey, but it was a cheap alternative. My intention was is to put a cut right here, take a wedge out, and then bend the finger, and then re-glue it, but for some, this plastic glove didn't lend itself to be re-glued, so that idea died quickly. So I moved on to this uh, live casting stuff that I found on Amazon. And there's the finished product, the left hand. And that's the left hand. So not too bad, pretty good. I wanted to get that half hand look. So what I did was I built a box on its side. We're going on an angle, so when I poured the you can see the alginate right here. So when I poured the alginate in there, it was sort of like on a slant. And then I just dipped my hand in sort of like this. So it wouldn't cover my hand completely. So it gave me sort of that look right there. I think what I'm going to do though for the other hand. Um, normally you could probably cast it in here and tilt the canister. But you don't really get a really wide type of... You gotta put your hand closer together to get it in here. You can still tilt the canister so you can get the effect of the um, the wrist here. But what I figured is, is I'm gonna do it in this canister, which is a little wider. So I'll mix it in here and then tip it a little bit and stick my hand in there. And that should give me a little bit better effect. Two things about this casting thing is the alginate, you got to be ready to go because it was hardening as I was putting my hand into it and it didn't take long at all. Uh, the water, I guess, was a little warm, so it set really quick. The second thing I wanted to say was if I had to do it all over again, I would probably just buy Three pounds of alginate, about two pounds of plaster of Paris should get you two hands easily. And probably for about the same money. The only other thing that you get in this is obviously you get the two canisters themselves. Because you gotta buy two of these, one for each hand. It comes with directions, which on a DVD, which is kind of nice, but I'm pretty sure that video is already on YouTube somewhere. I felt it would be better to work with the piece separately and then put it in place after I was done. The hand came out perfect, but it needs to have that look like it's coming out of the carbonate. So I put some more of this stuff in there. You can see the separate color, so this is the stuff here. Give it that look like it's coming out of there. I got a better mold this time. I used, um, I got the water measured out, put it in the freezer for about a half hour to get it nice and cold. And even so, I still, by the time I got my hands situated and started to relax, you could tell it was starting to harden up already. And I could see that I really didn't get a good mix in there because I was so concerned and submerging my hand in it. And good thing I did because, like I said, it, it, it solidifies pretty quick. Here's the second hand from that alginate mold. Unfortunately, the casting product, I ended up mixing it improperly on the first hand, so I needed to use what I had for the second hand. But I went to the store and bought regular plaster of Paris, and as you can see, it, it worked. So... In case you have a problem, or if you're going to buy the alginate just separately and then go to your local Home Depot or whatever, you can buy just regular plaster of Paris and pour it in there. I put like two 16 ounce cups of plaster of Paris, one 16 ounce cup of uh, just regular water. That should be just about enough to make the hand. I've got the two hands glued in. This one here. It's all glued in. That one's done. I started to pre-do this one off the piece. 
and then I laid it and planks glued it in. Six of one, half a dozen the other, doing this beforehand or after. So the other hand, I'm just going to do it in place. And also it produced a little gap, which obviously I'll have to fill in. One little trick when you're using this uh, plastic wood stuff, put it in place and wait like five, ten minutes so the outside's basically dry. And then you can kind of like mold it a little bit how you want it. So if you're plopping it into place and it looks hectic, you can still go back a little bit afterwards, like five or ten minutes, like I said, and just sort of like pat it a little bit into position so it's not too jagged because that's just more sanding you're going to have to do later. Hindsight is 2020. And what I probably should have done is put some tight bond around the hand first and then put in this uh, filler because when I start to sand this filler this uh, plaster of Paris gives it up real easy so if you get too close to it it wipes it right off. So if it had that tight bond on it she would hold her shape and she wouldn't give it up to the sander. So I recommend covering this first with the tight bond then fill in with this. Remember when you're doing the piece, you know, you have a lot, there'll be a lot of imperfections. I think the more imperfections, the better. Try not to have it be completely perfect. You know, it'll just add to the character of the piece. He's not supposed to be super slick. He's encased in carbonite, so it's going to have a lot of imperfections, just like the picture. Plenty of imperfections here. It'll give the piece an overall better look. If there's all kinds of imperfections. All the sanding is basically done. The next step is basically I'm going to cover the whole thing with the tight bond and make sure that you're done done because once you put that tight bond on there you're not going to be able to make any changes. I use the tight bond straight up to get all the big transitions like around here and anything that had a lot of detail in it that I wasn't worried about losing too much detail so around the hand and a transition from the face. But in this area, I'm probably going to take the tight bond and cut it with a decent amount of water so it won't ruin all of this detail in here. When you're using your tight bond, what I like to do is put it in a cup like that, use what I use, and if I have any left over, I just pour it right back in. Even if I cut it with water, I still just pour it right back in. I don't even worry about it. It seems to be working just fine. From here I basically took the tight bond, I cut it, it probably doesn't matter too much if you cut the tight bond, it just goes on a little thinner, so even though I went heavy in this area for the tight bond, I cut it for like in this area. Detail. I did go over the chest again, felt like it needed it. The pants didn't seem even, so I put a little bit extra on that side. And this side was pretty smooth, that side was a little coarse, so I want it to look kind of even once the uh, paint goes on, which is probably the next part. I did go in this area with the tight bond, and I might use a slightly different color. I'm not exactly sure what colors I'm going with, I'll probably stay in the gray area. Best thing about this part is if you screw it up, you can always just spray over it and start over again. And for me, I'll probably do an area, see how it looks before I touch the face.
For the base coat, I used that satin granite. Just gave it a nice even coat. I think this really came out good. So after spraying in everything with this color here, I went over it with the aluminum, not going too heavy, just giving it a light coat here and there and make sure I didn't get too many shiny areas. And if I did, I just took the gray and went back over it real lightly, dusted it. So if I was like, I was shiny here for a bit, I just took the gray, this gray here. And then just spray it over a little bit just to give it a nice hazing dust. And if it got too gray, then I would just go back over with the aluminum again. The hands ended up being a little shiny, so I just gave them a slight little coat of the gray to dull them out a little bit. And I was really looking for a flat finish. So I'm not too sure if I'm going to go gloss to cover it. Or just put a, a clear matte seal on it. But basically she's done. 